There have been a bunch of big shakes happening underneath Yellowstone National Park. It's usually a peaceful place with lots of pretty things to see and animals to watch, but things are getting rocky down there. The earthquakes are making the people in charge of the park worried. It's not that the park doesn't experience quakes, but this recent one is a sign that a volcano might erupt. But what can these quakes teach us about what's happening underground? Maybe there's a secret world of activity waiting for us to discover. Join us as we discover the causes of the Yellowstone earthquake. A bunch of earthquakes recently happened in Yellowstone National Park, and they interested scientists worldwide. People are worried because the ground is shaking more, and there's a fear that a volcano might erupt. This makes everyone curious and concerned about what's happening under Yellowstone. The latest earthquake was a 3.1 magnitude one that happened at 5.10 p.m. It was located 18 miles east of West Yellowstone, close to the Lower Geyser Basin and more than six miles deep. There have been several earthquakes since the beginning of 2024. Another earthquake of 3.5 magnitude occurred on January 19, 2023 at 8.09 a.m. It was located 188 kilometers from Boise, Idaho. The next day, a quake of 2.5 magnitude happened at 3.38 p.m. It was located 53 kilometers southeast of West Yellowstone, and its tremors were felt in the country. But, despite what many people think, a group of earthquakes doesn't necessarily mean a volcano is about to erupt. It's not connected to the big Yellowstone supervolcano where most of the park's seismic activity happens. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory monitors these earthquakes that started on New Year's Day with a 3.1 magnitude quake. There might be more earthquakes of the same size in the next few days and beyond. For some people watching from outside, even a small shake feels like a sign of a big disaster coming. But according to Mike Poland, the geologist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, these earthquakes are just Yellowstone doing its usual thing. Yellowstone has these swarms of earthquakes a few times a year, and that's normal for this place. It might be a big deal on other volcanoes, but Yellowstone is known for having swarms that include earthquakes with a magnitude of 3. Most of the earthquakes in Yellowstone are small, with a magnitude of 2 or less. However, earthquakes with a magnitude of 3 are not uncommon. In 2023, there were four earthquakes with a magnitude of three, while in 2022, there were at least 10. The biggest earthquake ever recorded in Yellowstone was 6.1 magnitude in 1975. The epicenter of this shaking was on the north central edge of Yellowstone Caldera, a few miles southeast of the Norris Geyser Basin. Despite being the greatest recorded earthquake within the boundaries of the park, it has received little attention to this day. Overnight, a damaged chimney and a rockfall closed the road between Norris and Madison Junction, and telephone service was momentarily down in West Yellowstone, Old Faithful, and Madison. The Hebgen Lake earthquake in 1959, with a magnitude of 7.3, happened just outside the park, and the 4.0 magnitude earthquake caused damage and casualties. Yellowstone experiences 4.0 magnitude earthquakes every few years. The two earthquakes with a magnitude of 3.1 this week are part of Yellowstone's 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes each year. According to Poland, Yellowstone's earthquakes usually don't just stop all of a sudden. Earthquake swarms are common. Sometimes an area can be active for days, weeks, or even months. Last March, a swarm under the north part of Yellowstone Lake lasted several days, with some earthquakes having a magnitude of 3.0. The biggest earthquake in 2023 was part of that swarm. Even though there was a whole day between the two 3.1 magnitude earthquakes this week, that doesn't mean the swarm is over. Swarms in Yellowstone usually last for at least a few days, if not weeks. There might be a quiet period, and more earthquakes might happen after a few hours or days. Some swarms last for months, but over time, they become less intense. In December 2023, Seismographs detected 89 earthquakes in the Yellowstone region. Three swarms were recorded throughout the park, each with up to 16 earthquakes. History of earthquakes in the park Yellowstone experiences many small earthquakes that humans usually can't feel each year. 
Most of these quakes happen between Hegbin Lake and the Yellowstone Caldera, along a hidden crack from a massive eruption 2.1 million years ago. These small tremors are caused by forces under the park's surface. They serve two purposes, to remind us of Yellowstone's potential for eruptions and to help maintain the regular eruptions of geysers like Old Faithful. In 1985, there was a three-month period with 3,000 tiny earthquakes in the northern part of the park, called an earthquake swarm, linked to the Yellowstone caldera sinking slightly. On April 30, 2007, there were 16 minor earthquakes with magnitudes up to 2.7. These earthquake swarms are common, with 70 recorded between 1983 and 2008. In December 2008, over 250 earthquakes, the strongest being 3.9 magnitude, happened under Yellowstone Lake in four days. In January 2010, more than 250 earthquakes were recorded in two days. The Earthquake Hazards Program continuously monitors Yellowstone's seismic activity. On March 30, 2014, at 6.34 a.m., a magnitude 4.8 earthquake hit the center of Yellowstone near the Norris Basin. Fortunately, no damage was reported. This was the strongest quake since February 22, 1980. The most famous and destructive earthquake in the Yellowstone area occurred 57 years ago. It was a 7.5 magnitude quake that caused 18 miles of surface faulting and was felt across 600,000 square miles. This earthquake destroyed a popular campground during the peak tourist season. On the night of August 17, 1959, more than 250 guests were sleeping near Hebgen Lake, just west of Yellowstone, along the Madison River Canyon. Some were in fancy cabins, resorts, or forest service campgrounds, while others found spots by the roadside. Suddenly, before midnight, an earthquake shook everyone awake. Shortly after, a wall of water overflowed Hebgen Dam and rushed down the river. Surprisingly, a large part of the canyon wall broke off near Rock Creek Campground. Because of the earthquake's massive landslide, Hebgen Lake's dam partly collapsed, creating Earthquake Lake as the landslide's silt blocked the river downstream. Sadly, 28 people died, and 19 are still buried in the debris. The earthquake also affected the park's north geysers, causing ground fractures, steam, and some clear water hot springs to turn muddy. The stress released in the fracture zone by this quake is believed to be causing recent quake activity in Yellowstone's north. On June 30, 1975, a 6.1 magnitude earthquake shook the park, causing minor damage. Geologists think major earthquakes like the Hebgen Lake event are unlikely within Yellowstone Caldera itself because high subsurface temperatures weaken the bedrock, making it less likely to break apart. However, earthquakes within the caldera can reach a magnitude of 6.5. A similar-sized earthquake occurred near the Norris Geyser Basin in 1975 and was felt across the region. Yellowstone can also be impacted by earthquakes that happen far away. In November 2002, a powerful magnitude 7.9 earthquake struck central Alaska, 1,250 miles, 2,000 kilometers northwest of Yellowstone. Because the earthquake's energy was directed toward Yellowstone's active volcanic and hydrothermal systems, it caused hundreds of smaller earthquakes. The region's hydrothermal system is particularly sensitive to earthquakes and undergoes significant changes after them. Earthquakes can destabilize Yellowstone's hot water system, leading to explosive hydrothermal eruptions. As reported in the monthly update from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, earthquakes, which are ground movements, are normal in the Yellowstone area. In 2023, the park experienced about 1,600 earthquakes, with an additional 80 later in the year. This falls on the lower end of the average for the region, where there are typically 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes a year. The two largest swarms of 2023 happened in March. One contained 147 earthquakes with a maximum M2, seven a few miles east-southeast of West Yellowstone, Montana, while the other had 106 events with a maximum M3, seven beneath Yellowstone Lake's north portion. These swarms are mostly caused by interactions between groundwater and existing faults. 
In 2022, there were over 2,400 earthquakes, and in 2021, there were over 2,700. About half of the earthquakes occurred in swarms, which are small groups of earthquakes happening in quick succession. The biggest earthquake in 2023 had a magnitude of 3.7. The caldera continued to sink at about an inch per year due to ground deformation. This has stayed the same since 2015, except for some small bumps in the summertime. When the snow melts and rainwater runs into the ground, the ground swells like a sponge and settles back in winter. So, ground deformation has remained the same over the past several years. The steamboat geyser, the tallest active geyser globally, erupted eight times a year, marking the lowest number of eruptions since it became active again in 2018. In May 2023, some previously inactive features were reactivated and new ones formed splashing debris and hot water onto the boardwalk. The Park Service had to temporarily close a section of the boardwalk due to hot water and ashes, and after three months, they lifted the closure. Ground deformation patterns followed a path that began in 2015, notably the caldera's subsidence at a rate of around one inch per year. The subsidence is paused during the summer months when snowmelt and runoff fill groundwater, causing the surface to inflate like a wet sponge but downward movement resumes by late summer or early fall. No major damage was observed in the Norris Geyser Basin during 2023, and geyser activity was also rather calm. The number of major water eruptions at Steamboat Geyser has been declining, as they have since the record-breaking performance in 2020, when 48 eruptions occurred. In 2023, the geyser erupted only nine times. But it wasn't just geysers going to sleep in Yellowstone. Giant Geyser, located in the Upper Geyser Basin near Old Faithful, erupted on November 23rd, marking the Stree's first eruption after a series of eruptions between mid-2017 and early 2019. The chain of these happenings reminds us of Yellowstone's Geyser Basin's volatile nature. Volcanic eruptions at Yellowstone Yellowstone is found in the northeastern part of the Snake River Plain, a big bow-shaped area across the mountains that stretches about 400 miles, or 640 kilometers, from the park to the Idaho-Oregon border. The eruptions in Yellowstone are believed to be connected to the older volcanism of the Snake River Plain. Yellowstone is like the active part of a hotspot that has moved northeast over time. The origin of this hotspot is still debated. One idea is that the Yellowstone hotspot was moved northeast by a mantle plume. Another theory suggests that the moving hotspot volcanism is due to the pieces and actions of the subducted Furalon plate in the Earth's interior. The Yellowstone caldera is the biggest volcanic system in North America, with only Sumatra's Lake Toba caldera being a close contender. It's known as a supervolcano because extremely powerful explosive eruptions created the caldera. The magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is thought to be one continuous chamber about 37 miles and 60 kilometers long, 18 miles and 29 kilometers wide, and 3 to 7 miles and 4.8 to 11.3 kilometers deep. The current caldera was formed by a massive eruption 640,000 years ago that released over 240 cubic miles of ash, rock, and pyroclastic material. This eruption was more than a thousand times greater than the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. It created a caldera of 45 by 28 miles and 2 by 45 kilometers and left behind the Lava Creek Tuff, a welded tuff structure. The most powerful eruption occurred 2.1 million years ago, expelling 588 cubic miles and 2,450 cubic kilometers of volcanic material, forming the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff and the Island Park Caldera. A smaller eruption happened 1.3 million years ago, releasing 67 cubic miles and 280 cubic kilometers of material, creating Henry's Fork Caldera and depositing the Mesa Falls Tuff. The volcanic eruptions at Yellowstone are quite complicated. Scientists from Montana State University have been studying the most recent big eruption at Yellowstone which happened around 631,000 years ago. This eruption left behind a large layer of ash known as the Lava Creek Tuff. However, 
It's not just a single block of ash. Many different units of ash are spread across the Yellowstone area. Figuring out how all these units fit together is challenging, indicating a more complex type of eruption rather than a simple one-time explosion. Geologists from the U.S. Geological Survey have been examining lava flows after the big eruption. Many of these lava flows occurred between approximately 70,000 and 160,000 years ago. Instead of being evenly spread over time, these several dozen lava flows happened in five separate groups or clusters. It's possible that eruptions in each cluster occurred at the same time. Just imagine what it would have been like to witness multiple lava eruptions simultaneously in different parts of the park. So, how do these eruptions happen? The magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is becoming clearer. There were two magma chambers stacked on top of each other. The first one, made of rhyolite magma, was about 3 to 10 miles deep, sticky, and viscous. The second one, made of basalt magma, was about 15 to 30 miles deep and a bit more runny, a more fluid type of lava. However, both chambers were mostly solid. Volcanic activity started in Yellowstone National Park about 2 million years ago. Unlike any in history, three really powerful eruptions happened, starting around 2.1 million years ago. During the first big eruption, the explosion released so much ash from deep underground that the ground above collapsed into the magma chamber. This created a massive hole called a caldera, larger than the size of Rhode Island. The caldera stretched beyond Yellowstone National Park into the park's center, measuring up to 80 kilometers long, 65 kilometers wide, and hundreds of meters deep. Later on, Similar events occurred in a smaller area in eastern Idaho's Island Park, just southwest of Yellowstone National Park. This led to another huge explosion, forming a caldera 1.3 million years ago. After that, most of the volcanic activity was concentrated in the National Park area. Another big eruption happened 631,000 years ago, creating the Yellowstone Caldera as we see it today. These three major eruptions were about 6,700 and 2,500 times bigger than the eruption of Mount St. Helens on May 18, 1980 in Washington state. The enormous releases produced enough ash and lava to fill the Grand Canyon. They also caused dozens or even hundreds of smaller eruptions, producing molten lava and debris. The ash and tiny particles from these massive vents covered a large part of western North America, about a third of a meter deep, several hundred kilometers from Yellowstone, and several centimeters thick even further away. The wind carried sulfur aerosol and the lightest ash particles worldwide, leading to significant temperature drops. During these volcanic events, large amounts of hot, broken volcanic rocks spread out as dense currents, covering vast areas. The high-temperature ash, pumice, and other rock bits stuck together to form extensive rock sheets resembling lava. These fused ash flow rocks are more than 400 meters thick in some places. From oldest to newest, the Huckleberry Ridge, Mesa Falls, and Lava Creek Tufts make up more than half of the material ejected from Yellowstone in the past 2.1 million years. Because huge amounts of magma were released during each explosive event, the tops of the magma storage areas collapsed, causing the ground above to sink by hundreds of meters, creating the calderas. Since the significant explosion that formed the caldera 631,000 years ago, there have been about 80 mainly non-explosive eruptions. Around 27 of these eruptions were rhyolite lava flows within the caldera, 13 happened outside the caldera, and 40 were basalt vents beyond the crater. Only a few of these eruptions left significant ash deposits, indicating an explosive aspect. The most massive of these explosive events occurred approximately 173,000 years ago and was comparable in size to the one that formed Crater Lake in Oregon. It led to the creation of a collapsed caldera, now occupied by Yellowstone Lake's west thumb. Volcanic Threat and Aftermath In Yellowstone, apart from the volcanic events, Yellowstone faces other dangers related to volcanoes, specifically hydrothermal explosions. Yellowstone has witnessed some of the world's largest outbursts from beneath the Earth's crust. These large hydrothermal explosions 
with diameters greater than 100 meters have occurred in Yellowstone over the past 16,000 years, averaging one every 700 years. Similar events are expected in the future, and they pose a risk to visitors and structures in the park. These past explosions released huge amounts of volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other debris, covering most of the continental United States. Some materials have been found as far away as Louisiana. After each eruption, the Yellowstone supervolcano collapsed, swallowing trees, mountains, and everything else in the area. The depression created by this event is known as a caldera, and the Yellowstone supervolcano is also called the Yellowstone caldera. A caldera forming eruption would be a significant natural threat to Yellowstone. Scientists estimate that the recent explosion in Yellowstone was 1,000 times more powerful than the famous 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, which caused casualties, destroyed land, and claimed lives in Washington and Oregon. Thousands of years ago, the last Yellowstone supervolcano erupted, sending a deadly surge of hot ash, molten rock, and toxic gases thousands of meters into the sky. A third of the continent was likely covered in total darkness. Fast-moving streams of hot, dry rock fragments and glass raced through the area, burying or crushing everything in their path. Magma flowing from the ground ruined the once-beautiful landscape for kilometers. Signs of the previous eruption are visible in Yellowstone's caldera, a big hole 50 kilometers wide and 70 kilometers long. The heavy volcanic material left after the eruption can still be seen in the Lava Creek Tuff area. According to officials from the United States Geological Survey, USGS, a large eruption like the last one is unlikely. Experts at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory believe that the most probable events in the future are steam and hot water eruptions, rather than molten rock or lava flows. Lava flows, a type of magmatic discharge, are less destructive than caldera-forming eruptions. Instead of causing immediate chaos, lava flows slowly seep from the ground over days, months, or even years. They are also rare. The last lava flows in Yellowstone happened around 70,000 years ago. Even today, hikers can see the effects of past eruptions in the different rock layers along the park's trails. Some evidence of recent lava flows can be found near Old Faithful, in the cliffs around the Upper Geyser Basin. The park is quiet, with scientists monitoring small movements or changes to predict what might happen next. While the underground forces have been contained for thousands of years, Yellowstone's inactivity doesn't mean it has woken up. A Yellowstone explosion would have terrible consequences for the surrounding area. A large explosion would most likely cause extensive devastation, with superheated combinations of gas, ash, and rock and volcanic mud flows wiping away everything in their path. The national park and surrounding communities would be badly impacted, and the death toll might be high. A Yellowstone explosion, however, would have far-reaching implications.